we are never officially ever noted for those pictures that they ever received those pictures it was just went secret it went black like it never happened I was on mid-watch uh, during uh, my second med cruise, and uh, it was about oh, sometime between midnight and 2 o'clock, and I had a contact come on the radar scope. I knew the difference between surface search radar and air search radar. There's differences in polarity of the radio signal and things like this and how the waves come back, all the stealth kind of stuff, you know, active and passive electronic countermeasures. So I know the difference between a flock of uh, geese or, you know, wave returns or um, false echoes. In fact, this was the first thing that challenged me to check it out in ECM as to whether or not the contact that I had on the scope was genuine. Because this was between uh, 65,000 feet and above, and the strength of the signal was as strong as the surface contact on the water of an aircraft carrier. This, this contact was huge. It was, um, got my attention and the attention of others that were on watch. There were four enlisted on watch and two officers at the time. And so anyway, in this particular case, um, it was showing up on height finding equipment and it was showing up on radar equipment. And then it began to move uh, fairly slowly at first and then very quickly. The, um, CO came in and he wanted to know what the heck was going on here and they looked at it and asked what the hell was that, you know, and it got the attention of the captain at that time was Captain Clark, was my captain, my commander was Commander Gibson at the time. And um, there were only, there was only one person on watch in ECM and before I knew, in a matter of, oh, 15 minutes, the ship was being turned and two Phantom Twos uh, were being prepared for launch. The um, Phantom Twos went to afterburners and uh, they were about 100 miles or so away from this contact and turned on their conical scan radar to lock on, and it winked out, just disappeared. After they landed on the pipe, 35 minutes later, uh, and everybody settled down, this thing winks back on again, and it's about 12 to 15 miles from the ship, hovering at about 30,000 feet. And um, in any event, they went out, and the lookouts couldn't see anything. Nobody could see anything. But it was there on our radar scope. It was not a false signal. And my SEAL told me, Jordan, this, you know, what have you got in your log? This never happened. And I wasn't the only one there on watch that night. So anybody who, who was there at that time knows, knows what I'm talking about and knows that it's the truth. Uh, but less than a dozen people knew what went on that night. And that ship had 5,000 men on it. There were documents that I have seen that refer to the Roosevelt uh, having several instances of uh, UFO flyovers and particularly after they took on board uh, nuclear weapons and I was on board when they did take those on for the first time. I was granted uh, after a six month wait a uh, top secret special compartmented intelligence clearance uh, with a, uh, a zebra stripe identification badge which permitted uh, access to all facilities on the base at all times. It's the highest level of alert that the Navy has or had at that time for dealing with uh, generally, for, gen for generally dealing with uh, global nuclear threats. When you set a condition zebra, uh, whether it's a drill or not, people who are not authorized to be there who, don't, who do not have a zebra access badge, it's a zebra stripe badge on your clearance badge, they have to leave the command facility um, and we have Marines stationed outside the building there, in the building and as well as outside that were under orders to shoot any unauthorized personnel that remained in the command center. They would announce it beforehand, this is a drill, this is a drill, set condition zebra. And unauthorized personnel would be escorted out of the command center 
if they didn't already know that they had to leave. And But they turned the lights down this time, and they didn't say this is a drill. There's a door right here, and this guy, the Marine, comes in and wants to know uh, what's going on. Is this a drill or so forth? He, you know, They've got orders to start shooting people. And I know because I actually got the junior OODs attention and said, hey, you guys need to tell this guy something. He's ready to start shooting people, you know, uh, because they haven't told him to stand down yet. And, uh, and which he did, and I remember, you know, wanting to just get the hell out of there. We had contact with an unidentified flying object that had entered uh, our airspace. And at that point, when uh, Admiral Train found out that the it wasn't the Soviets and that he wanted to know were the Soviets responding to this threat also. That was the end moment that he gave authorization to put two planes up to go see what this thing was. Pilots, you could hear the pilot's live voice transmissions being piped into the command center, uh, visual confirmation on the object, description of the objects. Uh, pilots were able to close a couple of times and be able to see that the, uh, the object was not an, uh, an aircraft that uh, we were familiar with, was nothing that we had, was nothing the Soviets had, and that was determined very quickly. This thing absolutely had con complete control of the situation and could just be wherever it wanted to be just in a matter of seconds. Uh, one minute we were, you know, closing on it, you know, um, off the coast of Maine. The next minute it's in Norfolk, headed south towards Florida. Uh, as Admiral Train was doing, he was scrambling, authorizing planes up just left and right, uh, up and down the whole eastern seaboard. It headed out towards, over the Atlantic, towards the Azores. I do remember them saying that it had pulled up at a 66 degree angle when it approached, as it approached the Azores, like this, and it just pulled up at a 66 degree angle without slowing down or anything, and left the, at the atmosphere just was gone. He just took off into space and was gone and just like that. The only descriptions that I recall that the pilots actually made were that they could not find any markings on the aircraft. Uh, they could not find any uh, visible signs that the thing had wings, a tail, windows, a cockpit, uh, or anything like that, or any markings from any country. They did get close enough to uh, get some uh, some photographs taken that were later brought over to the um, uh, to the command center. Well, from the photograph, I could remember the shape. What I would have said would have been, uh, I would say, a cylinder. I would say a cylinder because it was abrupt. It had abrupt ends. They didn't take the ends didn't taper down like most aircraft. This day, that particular day, I walked into the photo lab in the restricted area, and this was between missions. Uh, one of the gentlemen I had been friends with, and I still talk to occasionally, uh, he pointed his my attention to one area of this mosaic. It was one panel of a mosaic, and I, I said, this is really interesting. He explained everything, and then he, with a smile on his face, he said, look over there. And I looked, and in one of the photo panels, uh, I saw a round white dot. And at the time, it was very crisp, very sharp lines on it. And I said to him, uh, what, what is that? Is that a dot on the emulsion? And then he's grinning and he says, uh, dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And there was a round shadow at the right angle, at the correct angle, the sun shining on the trees. I saw pine trees. I didn't see a coastline. I don't know where this was. But um, I looked at him and I was pretty startled because I'd worked out there several years and never seen anything like this, never heard of anything like this. And uh, I said, is this a UFO? And he's smiling at me and he says, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that. What I knew he meant was it was, but he couldn't tell me. So I said, what are you going to do with this information? And he said, well, we always have to airbrush them out before we sell them to the public. And I was just amazed that they had a protocol in place for getting rid of UFO 